That's the thing you guys don't understand. I'm always supplementing before the build. So is it an invoice? No. It's an estimate, right? It's a freaking estimate. It's hypothetical. It's theoretical. So do not get into arguments with adjusters over waste factors. Ever. <laughs> in about, you know, like they, they, on Gable, we only pay 5%. You know, on, you know, forget about that argument. Just let them say whatever they're going to say because we're talking about before the bill. Just let them say whatever they say. What should they actually pay for for the waste factor, guys? They should pay for the actual waste factor, whatever that is. You don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, and neither does the adjuster. There's no way for us to know what that is, dude. We can get real close. We can use <laughs> these little waste calculators, and we can use that page on the last part of Eagle View that has like all the waste factors. We can use those to try to, like, my estimate will probably have 18%, maybe 22%, and the ridge, and the starter, right? Because again, I'm starting higher and then up higher, right? And they argue with me about that. I'm like, okay, well, which one do you want to take it out? You want to take the waist down and keep the ridge and starter on, or what do you want to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but to me, I don't really care because at the end of the day, when I do the job, when I amend my estimate, then it becomes an invoice, that's what I'm gonna expect you to pay for. Mr. Adjuster, fair enough. So, all right, we're gonna go on to the A bucket, B bucket, C bucket, all right? Turn this off for a little bit because we won't need it for just a bit. All right, this is also one of my favorite parts. <laughs> yeah, this is developed through 20 years now. I, and I'm, I'm, I find that a lot of the things that maybe you can tell that I'm talking about are a lot of common sense things, you know, in a world, in an industry where not a lot of common sense is usually applied, you know, and I, and I, so it's not a lot of like mastery, uh, magic, you know, some kind of magic bullet, you know, that you can come here, you know, if I go there and listen to this guy, it's going to make my life easier. And I'm sorry to let you in here to see that it's actually harder. <laughs> that I actually do more work. You know, I do longer inspections and more documentation and I apply more common sense, right? But look, we talked about this. We, we're going to supplement before the build, okay? And we might do a photo report to trigger a reinspect and the adjuster comes back out and we get an ESX to him. But either way, we're getting an estimate to him. You know, and if we may have to send our estimate to the inside desk adjuster. At some point, we have to write that estimate, put all of our codes in there, all of our um, photographs, all in one estimate, right? With all of our footnotes, everything in there. But at some point, there's going to come a time where we're gonna have to have a conversation with an adjuster. It may be that field adjuster at the reinspect, maybe the first adjuster. Um, Hopefully I didn't give my estimate to the first adjuster. That guy is a peon, that's a total pawn, right? But it may be the reinspect, maybe somebody on the phone I'm talking to that's reviewing my estimate. And here's the thing too, when you send it in, a lot of times they'll respond, like if it is somebody you haven't dealt with yet in person, like a reinspect person where we built that rapport, but it's just some random person, you know, inside desk adjuster receives the email and calls you and says, what kind of crazy stuff is it you put on this? I mean, usually that's how it is. They're like, they're hostile towards you because your estimate is so much higher than what theirs is. Now, I'm not going to be hostile to them and due to the fact that they missed all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, and by the way, only a small percentage of, the, of claims actually get supplemented. It's amazing. Like, they get by with so much. They make it like, they tell the first adjusters, don't worry if you, meet, if you miss anything, speed, speed, speed. Because we have other people that can deal with supplements later. Yeah, you do, but only if the client knows well enough that they can even go do a supplement. And know, even know what a supplement even is. And the contractor, if the contractor knows any better. A lot of times the contractors that have called me through the years, they, they, they called me because they went to an estimate, or they went to an adjuster meeting with their estimate, and the adjuster's like, well, I need it to be exactimate. And the, and the contractor's like, what? And he did an exactimate search and somehow found me. <laughs> you know, I found my website. He's like, hey, I, need a, I don't even know what this exactimate is. I need you to bang out an estimate for me. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, it, that's the way it happens. But essentially, they're, they're hostile towards you, okay? Even worse than that 
is they might get your estimate and they'll call the client first, your client. And they'll say, where'd you find these guys? This is not reasonable. You know what I mean? This is not market price. These guys are price gouging. You know? And so you have to like, you know, try to save your client at that point because they're thinking they made a terrible decision in hiring you, right? Um, easy way around that, real easy way, and it's preventative maintenance, <laughs> which is getting out in front of that and just simply tell the client as you're signing them up. Listen, I want to let you in on exactly what almost all insurance companies do. You know, like they, they try to drive a wedge between the contractor and the client, okay? So expect them to call and get irate with you. Direct them to me. You know, they might say, where'd you find these guys? Where'd you find? And so when the adjuster calls and says, where'd you find these guys? And they're like, my contractor told me you were going to be calling with that. You know what I mean? Like they're already, they understand. And a lot of this is about educating the client anyway, you know, as we get into the sales presentation. It's all about educating the client, full on, fully, fully, fully. Not only about um, what your process is like, but what the industry process is like. So like what State Farm typically does and how we deal with that, right? And how building codes work. I, these are things that I would full on spend as much time as possible fully educating the client about, you know? Because if they understand the building codes, even a little bit about it, if they understand that the chimney flashing has to be replaced per law, but State Farm has already been there and they already wrote an estimate, doesn't say a darn thing about the chimney flashing, that can get under their skin a little bit. They're like, oh yeah, I want the chimney, if it's law, especially if you proved it to them, you know what I mean? Uh, and you prove that you can't you know, uh, build on top of a wet deck, right? You can't do that stuff. Um, so, but, but essentially, eventually, they're gonna call irate, and the way I calm the adjuster down is to say, okay, okay, well, hey, I'm not perfect. I've been using Xactimate for 15 years, but maybe I made a mistake. You know what I mean? I make mistakes. Uh, tell me, which item or items in the estimate did you have a problem with? Chances are they didn't read the estimate. They just looked at the bottom line. They might have seen a couple items stood out to them. And they're like, it's one of them guys. You know, he's crazy. He writes these crazy estimates, you know. And he sees how much documentation, the footnotes, his head's already hurt. And he's like, how am I going to go through all this? You know, this is not the standard one pager, you know. My roof is like four pages long. But I want to force them to do the work. And that's hard to do. Just that part is so hard. So which item or items did you have a problem with? Well, and they usually point out something halfway through the estimate, something that's, that they caught. And I'm like, okay, um, is that the only item you had a problem with? <laughs> is it just that item? If it's just that item, oh no, I, well, I gotta, I gotta sit down and review it. Okay, well, when you're ready to review it, let's go through it together one by one, and we'll discuss everything. Because honestly, we need to get with the adjuster on the phone or in person to discuss every item in the estimate. If, unless they want to approve it, but every item they have a problem with in the estimate, we need to discuss it. Because I feel like if we have that conversation, I can easily bring it to their attention and convince them that it's going to be required. Most of it anyway, right? I mean, I can, I can, I can, not only can I justify it, but I can give them the justification, which is even more important, that they need to get it bought. Okay, so like they say on the phone, well, why do you have the pipe jacks? We were talked about this, right? Well, it's required by code. Why is it required by code? We didn't see any damage. It doesn't say damage. It doesn't say hail damage. It's damage. The nail holes, damage. If you look on page 34, there's the code. If you look on page 29, there's the screen adoptions, the show, or the, the code adoptions that shows those are the codes that are required. Okay, and then if you look at page 71 through 75, there's the pictures of the nails in the, in the pipe jacks. Done. We're done. And we have that bought before the build. Okay? But I'm just saying, we're much better off if we can get them to slow down and get them here and let's talk about every item one by one. If we can get through that process, just by, even if they don't agree to everything, they won't agree to everything. They never agree to all of my estimates. Sometimes they do. When they do, I'm like, oh, what did I miss? What money did I leave on the table? Because they're always going to knock me down somewhere, right? Um, but if I miss things at the inspection, then I'm starting from a lower position. And I'm going to end up, at, if they're always going to try to knock me down, if I start from a lower position, I'm going to end up at a lower position. But the higher I start, okay, then I'm going to end up at a higher position. Again, common sense stuff here. Well, Chad, you're just taking a bunch of stuff and throwing it at the wall, hoping for it to stick. 
maybe, <laughs> you know, but if I am, it's extremely calculated and strategized, right? This stuff's op obviously very, ca it's not, I'm not just throwing random stuff at the wall. It's legit, right? And so, but I, but I got to be able to have that conversation. I'm going to win and get way more money out of them at the end of that conversation. They may not have agreed to everything, okay, but I'm going to get way more money out of that conversation. Going through the conversation, they're going to ask me, they're going to say, why is this there? If I can explain it, great. Uh, if I can't, another, you know, like in other words, what do you do when they say, we don't pay for that, we don't pay for that, State Farm doesn't pay for that, not including the pot, right? I need to be able to respond to them one of three ways. I mentioned that before. I either take my response comes from the A bucket, the B bucket, or the C bucket. Going down through the estimate, remember, my estimate is written in the order of the job. So it's remove, 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 remove. Usually, usually the roof is first, right? And so like, those are the problems typically they're gonna have a problem with first, is the removal of the ridge cap, right? Removal of drip edge maybe, removal, you know, there's like three or four items that are gonna stand out to them right on the top, the removal only. They probably won't catch the R&R, the pipe jacks and stuff like that that are sandwiched where they're R&R together, but it's usually those three or four at the top that they have a problem with right away. If you'll note in my insurance email submission, which you guys do have, it says that we are extremely reasonable and willing to work it out to get on the same page with you, right? It says, we understand that our prices are way higher than yours, right? But just know that we're, we're willing to meet with you, talk with you, work it out. We're reasonable, right? So I'm trying to give them an indication of that. So now, my A bucket usually will come up right away, which is they say, we don't pay for the, we don't pay for that, it's included in the tear off, the ridge cap, right? We don't pay for the drip, it's included in the tear off. And I'll go through the motions of saying, well, actually, if you click on the illustration, you'll see um, that it's not. I want to prove to them that they're wrong, but I'm not going to, watch what I do with it though. So I'm going to go, if you look at the illustration, you'll see that's not accurate. It says in Xactimate that it'll, in, in for the tear off of the shingle, that includes the removal of the shingles and the felt. That's it. Now I'll give you, I'll make a little joke because I want to build rapport. I don't want to fight with them. I'm never, people picture me out there like going to you know, war with them and cussing them out, slamming them on the ground. It's totally the opposite. It's total humility, right? Like at first they think I'm just a kid. You know, at the end they're like, oh my God, what just happened to me? You know what I mean? Like so, but you know, so I'm in there, I'm like, <clears throat> okay, you can see that that's not accurate, right? The illustration says for that, that includes the removal of the, of the shingles and felt. Now I'll give you, here's the little joke, is that they probably should have said nails, right? Because there are nails in that. And they didn't say nails, but I didn't charge you for the nails. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but I'm just saying it does not include that. Fair enough. He goes, oh, hmm. I'll be damned. Huh, we still can't pay for it. <laughs> it's still included in the tarot. You know what I mean? And so what I, what, but what I do is I don't even give, I don't put it to him to hold his feet to the fire. I'll just say, well, if you can see, it's not included in the tear off, right? But I'll tell you what, as I said in the email, I'm extremely reasonable and willing to work it out. So I'll tell you what, just throw it out the window. Just take it off. No worries. That's my A bucket. That always shocks people. They're like, you did what? You let them get, you just threw it out that easy? Zero resistance, you know? That's what I do, but only on certain items, right? They're, you, that, those are little bitty items. Even with the DMO done right, they're just nickels and dimes. So we're, we're kind of at negotiating 101 with the psychological factor, giving them a win right away, you know? It does, and they're like, no, nah, that was easy, you know? I'm like, see, told you be, I told you it was gonna be easy. Right? I'm willing to work it out with you, man. I mean, you were yelling and screaming at me when you first got me on the phone, but see, I'm easy. And which items do we designate for that, though? Right? As a question. And so it's really, you get better at this as you go. And they're, they're really these subjective items where you end up at the spot of, well, we don't pay for it. <laughs> right? They can't say that on the code. You know what I mean? They have to pay for the code. If he says he's not paying for it, he's, he's, we're gonna have to get it from another adjuster. Okay, do what you can do. I understand you, know, you can only do what you can do, meaning that if you put it on there, then they would probably just kick it back down, right? Okay, well then don't put it on there because that wouldn't be good for any of us, right? So I'm always gonna take them as far as they can go, as far as I can get them to go, and then I'm gonna let them off the hook. <laughs> Straight up, why would I do that? Because as soon as I get the additional money from them, 
then I'm, and then the payment is in hand, okay, then I'm going to contact them again and say, hey, thanks so much for adding those additional items and adding the money. We just have a few other items that we st still have here that we need to clear up. You ready to talk about those things? You see what I mean? And they're be like, what are those things? Do you think they're going to say, no, we told you you're not getting those. No, you didn't. You just didn't approve them. You know what I mean? And I didn't agree to anything. And even if you did say that, you were wrong because they're still needed to be done, right? I mean, I understand you wanted to get it done that day, or the other guy wanted to get it done that day, right? And a lot of this is we're talking to a different state farm adjuster anyway. You know, We're not even bringing up the, the conversation that we had before. It's not even relevant. Hey, we sent an estimate before, and they approved a bunch of it, but we see that, that there are still some things that they missed, and we just need to address those things. You see what I mean? So, but now a bucket items, I never want to throw something out the window that I intend to go get later. <laughs> That's where it's crucial, okay? So it's got to be something where if I'm taking it off, it's gone forever, all right? And I, and I would say it's usually a removal item. It's usually a removal item. So if you don't agree and say they're refusing removal of rich cap or, or mm -hmm. something like that, you need to say, okay, we'll just leave it alone for now then or something? No, I, I kind of make, I, want, I don't want to make it too easy. I want to make, make them know that I'm doing them a favor by saying, like, because if they think they just rolled over on me, then they're going to think, like, I just rolled over on them and they, they just rolled right over me, then they're going to think it's going to be easy all the way through. I don't want them to think that, okay? So I do want to let them know, I'm an expert, gosh dang it, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm going to show you in the illustration that you're wrong on that, but I'm going to let it slide on this one. Throw it out. Told you I was going to be reasonable, you know what I mean? Like you want to have a, more of that posture, right? Instead of, oh yeah, I'm just a pushover, you can have whatever you want. But it doesn't matter because they're going to find out quick enough that you're not a pushover, okay? But let's keep rolling, okay? A bucket, take it off, all right? Now, B bucket, and this will, when you know what the B and the C bucket are, this will help you more with how to designate the A bucket, okay? But the B bucket is, I'm not taking this off. The B bucket is, I can prove it right now. We can clear this up right now, okay? It's the classic is the one with the flashing we've been talking about all day. The nail hole in the flashing. The picture's on 72, 72, 73. Can, can you see it? <laughs> I'll wait, I'll hold, do you know what I mean? Like, so we're not getting off the phone, we're not pushing it off for another day, we're clearing it up now. If it's something they don't have though, let's go get the, you know, let's go send them the, whatever it is that they're, we're missing. We, we, I'm pissed if I miss something <laughs> on that thing, you know, that estimate, right? But maybe I gotta go back out and get another photo of something, you know, that they don't have, or maybe I gotta go get another code that I didn't include, but I'm not letting it go, it's just, Let's hash this out. So let me submit whatever documentation I have to do now for you to approve it, okay? That's the B bucket. The C bucket then, okay, is for everything that didn't work in the B bucket, <laughs> where they said, okay, I see your documentation, and it's not, we're still not paying for it, right? Or you, you provided all these, this evidence of how com complex it is, Right, and you showed me, you know, all these things of why you say it reaches complexity and/or coordination for overhead and profit, but I'm still not paying for it. Okay, well, at this point, I'm not agreeing to what they're not paying for. I'm not saying to them, "Oh, you, you're not going to pay for it then?" Okay, great. I won't. I won't require you to. No, I'm not going to say that at all. I'm just going to say, "Listen, like, I understand that if you were to put that on there at this time." then they would just kick it back down, right? Is that what you're saying? Well, th then by all means, don't put it on there, right? What I'll do is I'll get more documentation later and I'll come back and do it later. You see, and this is how I say that. So what, what I say is, I'll say, listen, I believe in my experience and with my expertise, I believe that that item is required, okay? Give you an example. Uh, drip edge is required, right, to do the roof. But the gutter on this house is nailed through the drip edge, right? And so now we're going to have to take the gutter off just to get to the drip edge. So I've got detached, reset gutter. Maybe I have painting of the gutter, you know. Uh, maybe I have other things associated with that, right? And they say, I don't see it. I don't see how, why you have to have, do the gutter, right? I, I, don't, I don't see why you have to detach and reset the gutter. 
I go through the logic, right, and I show them photos, and I say, we have to do the gutter because it's impossible to do the, do, you know, so in other words, it's back to that, I do whatever is prescribed by you until I can't, okay, until I, I run into a brick wall, right, so to speak. So, listen, I believe that there's no possible way to do this job without taking that gutter off. However, okay, my job is to do whatever it is that you prescribe. So I'll tell you what, I'm willing, I'm willing to give it a try and to try to do it your way, okay? I'm going to try to do it your way because that's my job is to follow your prescriptions, right? So I'm going to try to do it your way. I'm willing to do that provided that you're willing to revisit this issue when it's no longer a hypothetical and it's no longer an estimate and we're there actually swinging hammers and it's an actual situation. That's the thing you guys don't understand. I'm always supplementing before the build. So is it an invoice? No. It's an estimate, right? It's a freaking estimate. It's hypothetical. It's theoretical. So do not get into arguments with adjusters over waste factors. Ever. <laughs> and about, you know, like they, they, on Gable, we only pay 5%. You know, on, you know, forget about that argument. Just let them say whatever they're going to say, because we're talking about before the bill. Just let them say whatever they say. What should they actually pay for for the waste factor, guys? They should pay for the actual waste factor, whatever that is. You don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, and neither does the adjuster. There's no way for us to know what that is, dude. We can get real close. We can use. <laughs> these little waste calculators and we could use that page on the last part of Eagle View that has like all the waste factors. We can use those to try to, like my estimate will probably have 18%, maybe 22% and the ridge and the starter, right? Because again, I'm starting higher and an up higher, right? And they argue with me about that. I'm like, okay, well, which one do you want to take it out? You want to take the waste down and keep the ridge and starter on or what do you want to do? You know what I mean? Like, but to me, I don't really care because at the end of the day, when I do the job, when I amend my estimate, then it becomes an invoice. That's what I'm going to expect you to pay for, Mr. Adjuster. Fair enough. You know what I mean? Like, so to go back to that, okay, I'll tell you what, Mr. Adjuster, I'm willing to try to do it your way, provided you're willing to revisit this when it's no longer hypothetical. Fair enough? And that's when the, usually the adjuster says, fair enough. But why? Because again, they're trained to always deal with supplemental items as they come up, aren't they? That's the nature of insurance restoration. That's what's beautiful about it. That's what they tell the client standing in the doorway. Don't worry, Mrs. Jones, if anything comes up, let us know. <laughs> we'll do a supplement. You know, so, like, so fair enough, fair enough. Another thing they know, that's going to be somebody else's decision to make it another time. So why would they care? Especially if it's State Farm Inside Desk Adjuster, <laughs> you call back five minutes later and it's somebody else's decision. You know what I mean? And they know it. They're, they're, that's somebody else, right? They, could, they might have to be subject to audit. So if they're a halfway decent employee, they want to make sure there's documentation to CYA, to cover themselves, right? And so, like, I'm willing to try it your way. I'm willing to try to do it your way as long as you're, as long as you're willing to revisit it. Fair enough? And they're like, fair enough. And some of them will say, but we're not going to pay for it then either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, okay, great. You know what I mean? But I understand like, that if I were to come back to you later and to revisit this, then I would have to bring documentation and proof as to why that is. Fair enough? Okay. So if, if you don't see enough nail holes in the flashing now, fine. But during the build, I'm going to make sure I get them. Okay. So that's the beauty about the sea bucket is that whatever they did not approve, See, in the A bucket, you threw it out voluntarily to make a, you know, to keep it going well. But you're not giving away a bunch of money, right? But you threw it out voluntarily. B bucket, and by the way, those eight items, when you come back and do an amended estimate after the build, you never put those back on there. Like, you, you keep your word, right? But the B bucket items, those are the items that you proved and got them to put on there, uh, as many as you could. But the ones they didn't turned into C bucket items. So, like... Okay, I couldn't convince you? Okay, well, I'll tell you what. During the build, right, I'm going to get more documentation and we'll revisit this, right, because I'm pretty sure that's going to have to be required, right? And so, like, now I know for sure which items they had a problem with, man. When I go set out to build it, 
If I didn't know, see the answer of, do you supplement before the build or after? Of course before. Because if I did it after, I wouldn't know which ones they're gonna have a problem with. So I gotta have a spotlight on everything, right? But in this case, all the sea bucket items, I know what they are, so I'm not giving them up. No, no, sir, I'm not giving them up. I'm getting them. That's why they're in the sea bucket. You know what I mean? I'm going all in on getting them. I'm gonna document everything. And so, so honestly, photographs. And if you think to yourself, well, my roofers, I'll get them to take the photos. They won't do it. Well, I'll make them do it. I won't pay them. They won't do it. It won't work. Uh, I'll get my sales reps to do it. It won't work. It won't work. I'll make sure because you have to, be, uh, to pay them. You know, they won't pay them unless you get it. It won't work. You won't pay them then because it won't work. I'll, I'll get my project. It won't work. <laughs> right? Like, honestly, you should hire somebody specifically just to do that task at the job site. If it is a project manager, he's not doing anything else, well, he's there for that job. Like, if, you, if that's hard for you to wrap your head, well, no, I'm not doing well enough to do it like that, Chad. Just freaking book a photographer for a half day. <laughs> Think of it that way. Probably get better photos, right? But under no circumstances can you miss the photos of the guy pulling, picking up the flash and holding it there, putting it down, <laughs> you know, putting it there. like literally like a GIF photo, you know, like there, there's no such thing as too many photos, you know, so you just literally need to take photos of everything, you know, of the deck, the, the spec, the deck, make sure it's solid, nailable, make sure it's not wet, you know, um, but even overhead and profit is a sea bucket item for me most of the time. You know, like overhead and profit, I'm gonna to try to get it before the build with my opening statement. I'm gonna show them just how complex it is. My photos should show that it's complex, right? That's a big overhead and profit uh, gainer right there. But they said, nope, we don't, we don't see it. <laughs> you know, there's a million trades, we don't see it, you know. Uh, and, and so essentially, okay, so you don't, you don't see it. All right, well, you don't think it's, it's complex and requires coordination then, right? Nope, okay, great. Um, well, I'll tell you what, it sounds to me like you, you pretty much think that I can do all of this at the same time, right? And with all hands on deck, no trades are going to overlap. Use the same people, you know, to get everything done in and out. All, you know, don't have to work around anybody's schedule, that kind of thing, right? And that's what you think, right? Okay, well, uh, I'll tell you what. I'm going to try to do it your way. <laughs> I'm going to give it an old college try, you know what I mean? I don't think that's going to be possible. You know, I don't think it's going to be possible, but I'm going to give it a try. I'm willing to give it a try, provided you're willing to revisit this issue when it's no longer a hypothetical. I understand, though, if I had to come back to you, I have to bring documentation and justification as to why I think that is. Fair enough? Okay, great. Right? And how am I going to do that with overhead and profit? You know? Easy. Like, you ever had them ask you for your uh, subcontractor invoices before? The insurance carriers? You've had that happen. If you do that, give it to them, but redact the prices. And they say, oh, no, we want the ones with, no, sir, that's none of your business. That's proprietary information. Hold firm. Never, ever give them your prices. That's just ludicrous. It's so funny to me when adjusters with a straight face actually ask that question to me. I was like, are you being serious? <laughs> you know, how long have you been working as an adjuster, dude? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm going to get a little different then, you know, because that's just crazy, right? But I have no problem giving them my redacted subcontractor, like I'll black out the prices, right? Because that shows coordination, right? And complexity as far as I'm concerned. But I'm the one giving that to them before they even ask for it, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm sending it in as part of my documentation. What else? Like uh, there are CRMs like Aculinx, Job Nimbus. Can you got anybody use any of that? The CRM program? Um, there are programs where you're just kind of entering in your activity all the time and your sales reps enter, enter in stuff at all times um, but we also have email that we use and text and all different things I don't really care how you get it but think of in terms of every single event that ever happens on this particular job for example down to the most minor detail even like 3:42 p.m. on Thursday Johnny left the job site to go to ABC to pick up a stick of drip edge. You know what I mean? Like that gets logged somewhere in a journal entry, right? Like detail, detail, detail. It's easy if you're using a CRM because when you place the order, that gets logged. When you do, when you make the sale, that when you pick up the check, that gets logged. When you 
go meet, uh, have appointments, right, with the client to pick out colors, that gets logged. But imagine anything like those things I just mentioned getting logged throughout the day, every day on that job. It's with one of those CRMs, you could just export all activity and print it out like reports, right? But, but if you didn't have that, just imagine literally a log book on the job, right? That to me is perfect to prove complexity, right? Like I think every job's complex, but I think, you know, if me and you went to on a hike somewhere to a mountain, for the, for the afternoon, and we came back, and these folks were like, hey, did you have fun? What'd you do, you know? And I'm like, you know, or, or, or it's probably more likely it's you, that's like, ah, I was all right, it's cool, you know, we took some pictures, but I got a headache, messed with my altitude, my, my altitude messed with me a little bit, right? And that was about it, right? And me, you couldn't shut me up, dude. I'm talking about, <laughs> you could have just made, you could have got the material and took it back, you know what I mean? Um, but for whatever reason, it actually works. That works, why? because it's documentation. It's CYA. Most of these adjusters, they just need to be able to have documentation. A lot of these meetings I've had, these uh, events, there have been adjusters in the meeting. It's really fun when the adjusters are there. I get to that part about, you know, as long as you're willing to revisit it later. Fair enough, Mr. Adjuster. And they're like, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's cool when there's an adjuster there, you can get the, and I've had a lot of adjusters that have worked for me through the years to get the, insight from their point of view, from the other side, right? Like to, to, to try to put myself in that meeting room with a bunch of adjusters going through the cases, you know, like the, the claims that are still lagging. Like they just want to close claims, right? Um, but they, they've just learned, it's like all adjusters everywhere, documentation, documentation. If they can justify with documentation, they can just, any documentation, <laughs> like sometimes it's the weakest documentation in the world, but it's documentation, you know what I mean? And so I'm really just trying to prove every single line item, back it up with a photo, a code, a footnote, some kind of documentation. That makes sense? And so like, you know, if they're not, and by the way, uh, thinking, speaking of a adjuster that used to work for me, uh, I had an inside former State Farm desk adjuster working for a high level guy. He had a lot of experience and he taught me something big one day. You know, there, there are times when I've had adjusters or I've sent them in the estimate and they leave me a message later and they're like, hey, Ch uh, Chad, I'm going through your estimate here and, uh, you know, I'm just seeing one issue here and it's the waste or it's something, you know, whatever it is. And um, so if you'll call me back, if you can tell me how we might be able to deal with that, then we can go ahead and get this matter closed out, right? And I'm thinking to myself, holy moly, they only had a problem with one item? <laughs> like, that's great. You know, I'm already like doing the math in my head. We'll take that item off. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be great. This will be, my client's going to be thrilled, you know? I call him back. Hey, how you doing? Which item? Oh, yeah, 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 man, throw that out. No problem. Take that off, you know? And then they're like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and finish out this estimate and, and, uh, and I'll give you a call back when I'm all set. Uh, okay, great. You know? And they call back later on, hey, Chad, how you doing? I'm just going through this estimate and now I got to the next page and now I, have a, I see another item, you know? And I'm like, oh man, only one other item, huh? Okay, take that item off, right? And they call back, like, hey, Chad, I'm like, how many items are there? You know, like, what's going on? And so this uh, guy that used to work for me taught me to do that in reverse to them, you know? Like, if you have problems that they still haven't cleared up and you're having trouble and, it's, and you're, you're getting resistance from the insurance company, maybe don't go after it all at once. Just go after one item at a time, <laughs> you know what I mean? And don't send them an estimate. Have to ask them about it on the phone, you know, like, like, hey, how you doing? I got a problem with it. You know, we met with the adjuster, wrote up the estimate, or maybe it's the, yes, the adjuster you met with, you know. I see your estimate here. Um, just have one issue is really just standing out to me that we've discovered, and we've been vetting this and planning the job and doing this and that, but, and one issue we're up against here is this issue right here. What do you think about that? Can we get that? And they're thinking, you know, that's the only item, and they're thinking that's the only item that we have to pay to get this claim closed. Do you know what I mean? Oh, sure, yeah, we'll get it out, get you a revised estimate. As soon as I get the revised estimate, as soon as the check shows up, hey, how you doing? This is Chad. <laughs> you know, we're still playing this job, and we see another item. Hey, oh, by the way, thanks for sending that check. That was great of you to do that. And we see another item here that we got. I mean, literally, it's all about wearing them down, you know, outlasting them, uh, patience. But I'd much rather do that and get the claim closed in 7, 14 days, 21, 30 days, rather than 2, 4 months, 6 months, 
because I have to wait and I don't have the control because somebody else is handling it. You know, that's not the way I want to do it. I want the control, right? Um, I'm trying to think of anywhere else to go with that. Oh, one other thing I want to say, it, just, it made me think of this with the waste, which I talked about the dollar amounts are not something I focus on. Another thing I don't focus on, I never, ever, ever think in terms of per square prices on roofing, okay? So, like, when you think of, like, well, in this market, they're, they, the, the, mar- the, the price per square in this market is such and such per square, or I charge this much per square, or, you know, they, they, the guy underbid me because he was charging this much per square, you know. I think it's all foolish to be talking that way, okay? And, and the reason is, and I've worked for companies that that's how they, they did it, right? Roof A, roof B, okay? Roof A has 30 squares. Roof B, exactly 30 squares, right? So same price per square, right? No, because roof A has 288 linear feet of drip edge. Roof B has 120 linear feet of drip edge. Roof A is a 912 pitch. Roof B is a 612 pitch. Roof A is a two story. Roof B is a one story. Roof A has a chimney. Roof B has no chimney. Flashing, right? Roof A has a chimney cap. Like I said, Roof B has no chimney. Uh, Roof A has special access issues. Roof B has none. Roof A has 12 pipe jacks. Roof B has four pipe jacks. Roof A, you, you follow me? Skylights, vents, all these other things. So how on earth can we say, <laughs> dude, just because they're the same shingle type, does not mean that they can be the same price per square, right? All of those things have to be priced per item, per item, per item, including when you go buy all the materials. It's going to be more, isn't it, if you have to replace all those than just the shingles? So why on earth would you charge the same price per square and make less profit just because you gave him more, you gave him more stuff and he made less profit, right? And so I, I think that's a dangerous frame of mind to be thinking, now I realize you have to think in terms of per square for your uh, materials and for labor. So like subs are going to be like, we charge this much per square. Okay, well, in that price, and this is the way I found, it's actually a benefit when I was a contractor, because I would be like, okay, guys, but do you go all the way down to the deck? Not usually, but we can. <laughs> you know, okay, great. You know, and do you, how much do you charge? You have a, like a price list for all, how you charge all this other stuff? No, 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 we include all that. If you want it, we do it, boss. Okay, well, let me give you another $10 per square, just in case, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, cause, because like, I feel like he should be charging me more, but he doesn't know it, and I don't want to lose him because my jobs are harder than everybody else's at the same price, right? But I'm making out like a fat rat, right? Because I'm charging per item everything that's on the roof, but no matter how many of those items, my roofer is one flat fee, you know? So it's actually a benefit to, uh, to, to, to think in terms of items versus per square. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Good. Any questions? All right. Take a little break. Let's do uh, five, ten minutes, a little shorter break this time. And then we'll come back and uh, get into the sales presentation. How's that sound? All right. And do you think of any questions you guys might have that you want to hit me up with before you go to? I do. We got sidetracked on the, on the waste. The end of my question was, what, uh, what's the actual, like, what's it say in exactly under what's waste? Because what happens, the reason I'm asking is every time I try to get rich, Oh, got it. They go, that's included in the waste. It, okay, got it, yeah. So, look, yeah, and that's just BS, too. That's just like the argument, you know, everything's just included in the tear-off, right? Everything's included in the tear-off, everything's included in the waste, and everything's included in the dump. So what's the, yes, what's right? the, yeah, exactly. Does the line item of waste say what it is, what, what it covers? Uh, like, like, for instance, the line item of tear-off says there, shingles and felt. There is no line item for waste. There isn't? It just mm. is a thing? Okay. No, you just change your measurements, and then you put a footnote in that says this, this reflects waste factor, right? Right. So now, they're saying that it's included in the waste, okay? Yeah. But, okay, let's play that out, right? But if you're the guy doing the roof... Right. And, you, and they say the starter and the ridge exactly. and the waste is all just one thing, right? right? 
So let's, playing it out, you as the, as the guy that does the job and buys the materials, you, like, what, are they right? Sometimes, maybe, maybe not. Most of the time not, though, right? right. Most of the time not. They're not right, Especially right? Especially on a hip house. Yeah. And, but, but how much are they right? What's the real answer? You don't know. Yeah. Neither do they. You don't know. You do know when the job's done. You know exactly. Then they cannot argue with you. They cannot say it's included in the waste if it really wasn't. When they say it's included in the waste, that's estimate. That's hypothetical. That's yeah. before bill. This is just our estimate that it's going to be included in the waste. And so my, my argument at that time was, we can start there, but you're going to pay. This, this is replacement cost value, bro. They owe for what's incurred. Yeah. You see what I mean? So what's the argument then when they it's say... It's an yeah, invoice, not an estimate. Yeah, at the end, when you invoice mm-hmm. them, and they go, no, we don't pay for that. What's the argument? Okay, the argument... Give me your, give me your supervisor then. Because this is different. So I don't think you're going to have this problem as much as you think you are. That's, all, that's my biggest problem. But, but you haven't yeah. been doing all the other steps. Right. That's, that's what I'm saying. You haven't been doing all the other steps before you get to that point. Because if you did, then all those things are already covered. You see what I mean? You're like, look, we already had this argument. I tried to do it your way. Yeah. And I'm just telling you, do you want to see my material receipts? I can show you my materials to show you what I actually used. Now, if that doesn't work, like another thing I haven't told you guys yet, this is a newer one that I've been coaching people to do. I actually advocate setting up a camera at the job site. Several cameras, like security cameras, getting, getting your, your client's permission, obviously. But... Think about that, dude. You could prove special access. You could prove a lot of different things. You could prove extra labor hours, complexity, show how many people came and when they didn't. And so, like, on that, I have my material receipt, and they say, how do we know? I have cameras at the job site. You know, I'm not letting up on that. And if they, and if they, and if they don't give it to you, you know, like, get off the phone and call again and call again and call us. Wait a couple, they call the supervisor, right? But here's my... Here's my Worst case scenario, I will give you the, the fail safe, the nuclear option, the nuclear option. Good, that's a good way to call. I've never thought of it that way, but I should brand it as the nuclear option because it really is. Um, and this is, look, my, and this is what I would say, and I would cover it with my client first, okay? But this is literally what I would say. I would say, okay, I've tried to be courteous and proactive and, and try to really work with you here, you know? And honestly, my, my contract is with the client, is with the policyholder, not with you, right? So I think you'll agree that I've been courte- courteous by including you in these conversations when actually it's none of your business. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've been including you because you're paying for it, but my contract is with the homeowner. And it's none of your business. So from here on out, I'm going to go ahead and leave you out of this process because you're being totally unreasonable and I'm doing nothing but being reasonable, okay? So at this point, I'm going to bill my client for these items and they're going to have to pay me. And if they don't pay me, I'm going to have to put a lien against my own client's property, which I definitely will do. If anything to preserve my statutory lien rights. And then I I probably wouldn't even say goodbye. I'd just hang up. Yep, and you know what's going to happen? They're going to go in and report that to the supervisor. Wouldn't you? Because if it comes back and blows up in their face, they'd be like, hey, you know, I just talked to this crazy idiot on the phone. You know what I mean? Just letting you know, I told him he was wrong, you know, and we were right. And, you know, and he's always going to be wrong. And we're always going to be right. And he said he was going to file some stupid lien. I told him he was crazy, you know, and, uh, and that's that. Just want to let you know, though, in case anything happens, right? And then the adjuster, the supervisor's like, well, why are they going to file a lien? And, well, I, you know, I told him I wouldn't give him the overhead and profit and da 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 You see what I mean? Or I wouldn't give him the waste or whatever it is and yada, yada, yada. Well, just give him the freaking waste. <laughs> like, I've actually used that maybe five times in my whole life, right? And I think maybe four out of the five, I was successful. I can remember one in particular. It was a young gal at the <clears throat> Farmers. And she had previously agreed to the overhead and profit and then said that I couldn't have it later, right? And I, was, and I said, and this is another thing I do, is I say, 
it's not me, it's my boss. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is usually true because it's a contractor. It's not me, it's my boss, right? But I'm just letting you know that my boss is going to file a lien against this client's property. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to let you know that. Just giving you a heads up. You might even try, like, if you didn't get any response, go ahead and send the notice of the lien that you would send to the client, a copy to, of that to the adjuster. <laughs> you know what I mean? And copy the claim file, because if they're not trying to cover themselves, maybe they're thinking that nobody's going to see it. You know, send it to the inside and copy it through the inside, the State Farm Fire Claims at statefarm.com. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, send it on the inside. Like in all state, if you send it to the inside, it goes to the adjuster that it's assigned to. But it, it's a copy of it made inside, right? This is a way to keep everybody honest, keep eyes on everything. But put cameras on the job site. You know what I mean? Like, like, but that to me, bro, I see your frustration, but I don't see that as a, that, that to me is a piece of cake. So that, you're gonna start, that's one of the biggest stuff. You, it is, but you're gonna start winning them all the time now. Okay. Just simply because of your timing and how you're asking for winning it. Everybody loses this one because they're all losing the fight before the build. Yeah. And frustrated. It's like one of the most commonly asked questions I get. What about the ridge and starter? Waste. What about the ridge and starter and waste? Yeah, you just turn yeah. copy of waste. I'm like, screw that ridge and starter and waste, dude. You can write it up for whatever you want to write it up, Mr. Adjuster. I could care less because I'm getting it later. You know what I mean? So the more I can get them to give me now, the better, because it's less work I have to do later, right? Yeah. But I'm getting mine on the waste and the starter and the ridge. I'm just getting it. Yeah. They're not, but not up front. Sometimes I'll even get it up front. Not usually. Not usually because I'm always putting too much on. Yeah. I'm putting too much on. Yeah, I do too. You know, I'm putting too much. I'm putting 18 plus ridge plus starter because I want to end up at that higher position. You know, I've had guys tell me, clients, they'll be like, hey, Chad, I, you know, you got it like 50 grand on this. Hey man, this is, I don't want to be too crazy on this one because the adjuster's super cool and I'm afraid he's going to get, he's going to get all irate, you know, and I want to keep him cool. And, uh, is there any way you can get down to like 45? I'm like, dude, no, man. Let the chips fall where they may. Do an accurate inspection, put the accurate items in there and let the chips fall where they may. You know why? Because no matter where you start, they're pushing you down. So if I start at 45, they're going to push me down to 40. They're going to try to get you down, even if they're using your ESX. They're going to try to find something in your ESX to take off. You know what I mean? They, they, it's just like they can't possibly just approve your whole estimate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's a no-no. You know? I'll say too, um, we talked about the RFG DMO. So you get it bought by sneaking it through on the ESX, right? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to use the restroom too, but um, you get it bought by. I'm just trying to provide value, you know. Just pour it out like a fire hose, you know. However you can get it, um, you get it bought by sneaking it through on the ESX. Another way you get it bought is on some circumstances. And you may have had this happen where the insurance company wants your estimate, and they essentially ultimately approve your estimate as a bid item. Ever had that happen? Like they approve, it's just like as one line item, we approve this as a bid item. In that instance, they're not rewriting their estimate. So they're, so it's gonna fly. The DMO is gonna fly, the RFG versus DMO should fly, unless they caught it. But they're only gonna catch it when they have to write the estimate. And actually they won't catch it, they're just gonna write it the way they write it, and it's never gonna become, and if you can bring it to their, you can bring it to their attention, they're like, we don't pay for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, nationwide is one where they will, uh, you send them your estimate and they'll write you back with like 25 different questions and they're like why do you have this on number one and, and number two uh, we don't pay for this or number three please send us your uh, pictures of this or why you have that or whatever um, and then but but they don't and so like I'll go through and I'll respond to each one of those things with nationwide which I feel is a good thing to do and it's on the record you know I'll respond with each one of those things any documentation I can provide to prove it, right? And of course, they don't approve everything, you know, and, but they'll agree with me on most, if not all those things. But at the end of that process, they don't rewrite their estimate. They make me rewrite mine. 